All right. Well, it's been really awesome to be here uh, today. Um, lots of inspiration from all the speakers. I think a lot of overlap in, in kind of the tools that we're using, some of the processes that we're using. Um, what we'd like to talk about is uh, sharing some of the inspiration and ideas that we've gathered over the last decade of working as a fully distributed team, and specifically in the ways that you could uh, connect the different knowledge silos and address overcoming conflict so that you could have a healthy organizational culture. So this is civic actions. Well, it's a representation of civic actions. Um, we are a company that works to build a more transparent, more open, more participatory government. And we have 25 team members. I've been around for 11 years, started as three. We've been growing through that process. And we're currently in four different time zones. Uh, most are US-based. We have a couple people in Canada, a couple people in Europe. And uh, we're a services company, so what that means is we work, we are on teams within the company, and then we serve our clients on different teams. So we work with a lot of different clients. Now, the natural part of any organization is that conflict naturally arises. And that's to be expected. There is healthy conflict, and there is unhealthy conflict. An example of healthy conflict might look like uh, sales has sold a bunch of work or is projecting to sell a bunch of work and the delivery team thinks that the forecast is too rosy and then might push back and challenge some of those assumptions. And that there's some conflict there, but that's healthy and you work to close that delta, right? And unhealthy conflict looks like when there's like a lack of trust and maybe a team member doesn't feel appreciated by their manager and they're starting to feel closed down or maybe they're starting to gossip and you know really has a negative impact on the organization so i'd say we sort of misnamed our our um our presentation today because the goal is not to overcome conflict but instead to build an environment where there is healthy engagement and healthy conflict where people feel comfortable being questioned and they feel comfortable questioning others so we were at a place a couple of years ago where everything was fine but it wasn't great um, and we had multiple teams, like Aaron said, who were participating in daily check-ins, like has been mentioned as something to do earlier today. Um, we also had a monthly call that the whole, that everyone in the company was part of. And we started to hear from people, you're not sharing enough information with us. And we'd say, well, what do you want to know? And they couldn't exactly articulate what they wanted to know, but they just, we just kept hearing the same complaint. You're not sharing enough information with us about what's going on in the, in the company. Um, at the same time, we also had people who um, we noticed were not always as present as we needed them to be, especially when there were difficult conversations to be had. Suddenly, you, they weren't online, they weren't answering emails, things like that. Um, so we sort of got together and said, what is going on? And the hypothesis that we came up with is that, um, is that people were seeking greater connection. There wasn't specific information that they wanted, but that they were expressing a need for more connection. So we decided to try a few things. And one of the first things we did is we increased the frequency of our team-wide meeting to weekly as opposed to monthly. Um, it has sort of evolved over the, the couple of years that we've been doing this. But the current iteration is that it starts with a 30-second highlight from all the different teams that are part of the company. And we keep that 30 seconds. We want your highlights. We don't want you to go into great detail. It's followed then by. Um, a general question to everyone, hey, is there anything big that's on your mind? Is there something that you're really excited about, something that you're really worried about, something that you're wondering? Um, then, after that, we dive into a bigger topic for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the way that we come up with those bigger topics is on a quarterly basis, the team gets together again in that 30-minute time block, um, brainstorms a bunch of, this is, these are the things I want to have a conversation on, votes on it, and then we line up someone to facilitate that conversation and sort of pick them off week by week. Um, and it, what's this done, what this has done for us is 
First of all, we have a weekly connection point. Second of all, we get a weekly pulse from everybody. What's going on? What are they worried about? What are people thinking about? Um, and then quarterly, we, have a, we get a quarterly pulse in like, what are the bigger, bigger topics that people are thinking about, skills that they want to be um, working on, things like that. From these quarterly lists of things, we've started communities of practice. Um, so we identify a champion or champions, people who are really interested in something, and then we build a group around it, and then their job is to sort of move that forward in the company and disperse that information company-wide. Um, the current communities of practice that we have going on right now are, um, we have a agile development processes practice, software craftsmanship practice, and a um, design thinking. So of course, one of the challenges of uh, distributed work or even in conference calls is really uh, managing attention and the ability, you know, of, uh, you know, people's ability is a to multitask is really amplified. Um, so one of the processes that we've set out is that we make video calls the default way that we communicate now. And that was a transition from how we used to do it. Uh, we primarily use Google Hangout uh, for most all our calls. The one exception to that is if we're going to have m the entire team on the call, like an all-hands call, which we alluded to earlier, we'll use another product called Big Blue Button. Balance scores are really what I would say the, the secret sauce of civic actions, and this is something I believe is really unique to our organization. So every call that we have, in the first 10 or 15 seconds, we go around and ask everyone, what is your balance on a scale of 1 to 10? And what we're trying to do is balance in this context is really just where are you at in managing uh, the different aspects, the balance between work and life? And so we'll get a read, oh, 7, 8, 8, 7, or whatever it is. And it's really great because all of a sudden you start to notice patterns and when there's drops. Since we don't have visibility in a, in a physical environment, we often miss the visual cues that um, we get in that kind of space of someone's having a bad day, they're grumpy or something's happening. And this really allows us to like intervene and you know, someone says their child's homesick today you know, and that's why their balance is low, low, we could like jump in and support them with that. Another great program that we have is called the Gold Star Program. And this is just a way for other people on the team to call out greatness um, of team members. So the way that it works, if someone goes above and beyond their normal day, you could say, you know, you send an email blast to everyone, and it's really when they learn about it as well. I want to uh, assign a gold star to so-and-so for doing this amazing work. And then it's a chance for us to celebrate the wins, kind of have insight into the other parts of the organization that we might not. And then as a company, what we do is we do a small reward for that. We'll give the recipient a $25 gift certificate, a little token from Amazon, or they could choose to donate that to a charity of their choice. We also apply the build, measure, learn uh, methodology to meetings. It's really important for us, especially as we work remotely, to keep our meetings relevant. And part of that process is on a regular cycle, at the end of each month, we will do a retrospective on how did the meetings go this month. And then we'll, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what do we want to try, you know, create some hypothesis. And then we'll incorporate those learnings into the next amount, of, into the next months of meetings. You know, maybe people could choose out, or maybe we want to try a new agenda or something like that. So it really keeps meetings fresh. Um, as we've increased connection, ideas are coming from everywhere in the firm. So some of those are, um, if we're not all in the same building, it's, you don't get that same, let's meet for birthday cake in the conference room, or let's all sign that birthday card. Um, so something that we do sometimes are group projects. Um, a few months ago, we had a team member who needed to, or who had to have knee surgery, and she was quite worried about it. So um, different teams put together a series of video, like well-wish 
we wish you well cards. Um, and the, the burst of laughter and giggling that was at the end of every one of those um, videos was fantastic. This is something that hasn't worked that well for us. Um, we're experimenting with it. Everyone, on everyone's calendar is a two-hour block during the middle of the day that links to a Google Hangout that is intended to be our water cooler. The idea is you're, you show up and can chat with someone. Lately, though, it seems you show up and you're the only one there. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to play with that a little more. Um, something that came out of the quarterly, um, quarterly brainstorming is um, a request for ways to get to know each other personally. Um, again, we don't have a chance to go get a cup of coffee with each other or go have a beer after work. So you don't learn those little extra things about each other. So, um, so what we do is periodically anyone can send a personal question to the team-wide email list. The, these are photos that came from send me a picture of the non-humans that share your home. Um, other questions that have gone to it have been, um, you know, where was your mother born? Or tell me the history of your name. So um, we have, we sometimes play games, do like 30 day challenges with the team to keep accountability outside of the office. Like I want to work out for 30 days or I want to do 30 days of yoga and we'll do it on a shared Google calendar. Um, this isn't talked a lot about here, um, group chat. This is actually really working for us. We all meet on IRC. The entire team is there. It really gives a sense of teaminess and team presence. Um, we're all in the same room. And it gives also a way to like ask kind of quick questions that maybe you don't need an email thread for. You know, just like I need to get someone's attention or you're late to this conference call or, you know, check out this funny picture or anything like that. And then lastly, one of the things that we begin to incorporate is more mindfulness. So we've done some group meditation, about 10 or 15 minutes, hosted on Google Hangout. Uh, and it's totally voluntary, but just a place to like people to come, gather their thoughts, pay attention to their breath, really take a step back from their day-to-day -day work, and really kind of share in that you know, open, more open space. And um, yeah, it's been really awesome. So we no longer get the complaint that, that not enough information is shared across the um, firm. We think that it's because we've created an environment where people are comfortable reaching out and being reached out to. Um, this isn't something that you just do once and then you're done. It's a constant thing to be paying attention to. Um, and we hope that some of these practices will be useful to you. These are our Twitter handles. Feel free to get in touch. Thank you both so much.